Uh, joining us on the line now is ABC's Aaron Katursky in Sanford, Florida, where he's been covering the trial uh, of uh, George Zimmerman, uh, the George Zimmerman murder trial. Of course, a lot of testimony yesterday. Aaron, thanks for joining us. I want to talk about some of the defense testimony that was brought forward yesterday. I guess the, the big discussion has been whose voice is it that we hear screaming in the background of the 911 tape? And, I, and when uh, the prosecution brought forth Trayvon uh, Martin's mother and said, well, that it's, it's my son, that opened the door for a lot of other testimony for people who have a different opinion, and we heard from some of those people yesterday, did we not? It's such an important question for the defense. Whose voice is it on that 911 call? All but one of the witnesses who testified uh, for the entire time the defense has had the case has been asked about this 911 call. And some of those uh, folks were friends, family, who, who said unequivocally that it was Zimmerman's voice screaming for help uh, in the background. And then the, probably the emotional high point of the day was Tracy Martin, uh, Trayvon Martin's father, called to testify by the defense, uh, who said that at first he wasn't sure, and then after listening to the call about 20 times, he finally concluded that it was his son's voice that he had heard. The problem for him, though, was that, the, and the jury heard, that two police officers uh, testified that when they first played the call for Tracy Martin two days after his son was shot, he sort of leaned back from the table where he was sitting, uh, put his head in his hands, and, and, and uttered, no, it, it was not his son's voice. Well, and Aaron Katursky, that a lot of people have been questioning the defense's strategy in bringing Mr. Martin to the stand since they had the detectives uh, giving that testimony, saying that uh, uh, third hand, that uh, they witnessed him saying no. Was it a blunder for them to allow uh, Mr. Martin to come to the stand and then say, oh, oh no, 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 it is Trayvon's voice? You know, hard to say if it was a blunder because they did uh, sort of trip him up a bit, and and they the jury at least heard him say that at first he wasn't sure. They heard the police uh, say that you know what he said no, and and, and both of those officers testified that that he said no. Uh, the problem for the defense is that it was simply the most gripping moment of the day. Uh, the the grief on Tracy Martin's face was apparent. Uh, he spoke in in a very uh, matter of fact, low voice, and 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 he talked about the pain of the day, coming to terms with his son's death, knowing that he had been shot, uh, and, and hearing w what uh, effectively was the last 40 seconds of his son's life captured on a 911 call. But as touching as that was, it may not exactly help the prosecution, because again, you have the two police officers saying that Trayvon's father uh, said it was not his son's voice on the call. Right. Hey, now, there have been some queries during the prosecution's case into the background of George Zimmerman. Does that now allow the defense to go into the background of Trayvon Martin? Specifically, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, the, the, the reports that he had uh, traces of marijuana in his blood at the time of his death. Oh, that was the de that's been the defense argument all along, uh, and, and the judge has given them a small victory. The, the defense will be allowed to tell the jury, uh, likely today, that Trayvon Martin had trace amounts of, of marijuana in his system. Outside the jury's presence, a pathologist has already testified that it was, uh, you know, though a small amount, enough of an amount to potentially affect his behavior. And remember what George Zimmerman said at the outset to a police dispatcher. This guy looks like he's on drugs or something. And in fact, uh, there was marijuana in his system, and the jury's going to hear it. And the defense is expected to suggest that Martin perhaps confronted George Zimmerman out of uh, paranoia or, or, or something because of that, uh, of that marijuana. Uh, Aaron Katursky is our guest. He's the ABC News correspondent. He's reporting from Sanford, Florida, on the George Zimmerman murder trial. And, Aaron, what is the mood like down there in Sanford now? So much media attention, of course, on this case. And we're hearing reports already that there are preparations in place by local officials for demonstrations and potentially uh, ugliness if, in fact, this ends up being a, uh, an acquittal. Uh, well, the police are certain, uh, certainly making preparations. But, you, you know, the, the, there doesn't seem to be the the same tension that existed here you know, 17 months ago when we were down here uh, first after this happened. It, remember, there were protests through the streets, not just here in Sanford, but in uh, Miami and New York, all over the country, really, in response to the, the lack of an immediate arrest of George Zimmerman. Uh, since his arrest, and, and as the, the, the realities of the trial become more apparent, even to the supporters of Trayvon Martin's side, uh, it, it, it seems as if there, there is an anticipation uh, that, that the verdict may not be uh, you know, the, the way they want it. 
and we've heard from community leaders and, and, and police that, that there's a call for calm. Trayvon Martin's parents were, were out in front of that at the beginning of the trial. Uh, so though preparations are underway, and the judge is expected to hold the verdict for a couple of hours to, to, to give police time to prepare, uh, it doesn't feel uh, as tense as it did. And also, Aaron, is there any suggestion as to how long the defense may take in terms of presenting their case? It looks like they spent so much of yesterday, pretty much their entire defense so far, has been attacking the notion that that voice on the 911 call is uh, Trayvon Martin's. Uh, what more do they have, and do we think that it might wrap up this week? They want to turn away from the phone call and, and move on to forensics today, including the marijuana. They also want to show the jury pictures of George Zimmerman's bloodied and bruised face and head and get a pathologist, their own pathologist, to, to testify that those injuries were, in fact, indicative of a life-or-death struggle, not minor, as a prosecution witness said. And, and then that, that may be close to it. It's very possible that the defense wraps up its case by the end of today. And do you get any, I mean, are you able to watch the reactions of the jurors? Do you get any sense of how they're absorbing all this? You know, it, it, riveted uh, it, it is the one word that keeps coming to mind, because the, the jury, it, as the lawyers involved have said, do not seem bored. I mean, they are, are just like. captivated by the testimony, and they've been living with this case uh, for as long as anybody, because they're from here in Seminole County, Florida, and, and you can tell there are you know, moments that they perhaps uh, are more fascinated by than others, but uh, none of them have been caught napping. Uh, no one's been nodding off or, or kind of gazing away. They seem riveted on the testimony. Many of them take uh, quite a bit of notes, and they'll be allowed to use those during the, their deliberations. All right. Well, Aaron Katursky, thank you for your good work down there, and we'll continue to check in with you from time to time. All right, fellas. Thanks. Thank